Have you ever wondered why it is that when you order a free form or a digital lens, you send the lab this, and then three days later you get back this? The difference between the order that you sent in and the order you got back is that the lens has now been compensated. And what that means is that the lab has put the full computing power of its digital surfacing equipment to work to create a lens that best matches the prescription written in the as-worn position. What does that mean? Let's dig into a bit and find out. First, we're talking about lens design here. This is super, super important. We're designing the lens, we're not designing the prescription. We're not changing the prescription. We are not overriding anything. We are not playing with the prescription. We're playing with the lens design so that it fills that prescription in the most accurate way. In ordinary day-to-day -day optical dispensing, up until, let's just throw the number out there, 25 years ago, right? You were familiar with monocular PDs. You were familiar with taking fitting heights for line bifocals, progressive lenses. We never really took much account for vertex depth or distance, wrap and tilt. Let's talk about where those things come into play so that you go from those perfect numbers to those weird numbers that you get. It's a phoropter. It's that tool that a doc or a practitioner uses. They put that thing in front of your face. There's a picture of it and they dial and they switch and they throw levers and you hear the little sounds and you're looking at the big A and the little E and the I and you say, yes, one is better, two is better, two is better, one is better. If you stop and think about it, that phoropter has to be the same everywhere that doctor goes. The doctor may go to multiple practices. They may work at one store one day, one store the other day. Different doctors use different lanes within a, within a store. You know, sometimes those places have five or six exam rooms. The phoropter has to be a standard. You, you can't have a whole lot of parts and pieces that you can move. If you do, then every doc's gonna get something different and you'd have literally chaos. <laughs> so the phoropter is fixed. If you think about the phoropter sitting in front of someone's eye, it's neutral this way. The, the phoropter doesn't tilt on this axis in front of your eye. If I'm looking down, here's my person, here's my uh, forehead rest, and I'm looking through the phoropter, here's my eye chart down here. It doesn't move this way. It, it, it can't swivel this. There, there's no wrap change here. I can dial a little bit of vertex depth in that I can read, I can say that this is 10, 13, 15 millimeters away. Away from what? Away from this perfect, beautiful glass lens that's inside the phoropter. This is the perfect world. This is repeatable. This is a, a different doctor, a different phoropter is going to get something extremely close to the prescription that lets the person see clearly. PDs, it can be adjusted for, it can be moved this way. Fitting height doesn't play into this because it's lining up perfectly in front of their eye. Vertex can be dialed in. There's a little, should have drawn that in there, sorry. There's my forehead rest. And this could be 10, 12, 13. There's a dial here, tells me how far the front of my cornea is to the front of this beautiful, perfect glass lens that's inside the phoropter. Wrap and tilt, let's call it zero. Perfect world. 
So what I like to say, if we take the perfect world and we subtract the real, real world, we end up with lens design. Let's see where that comes from. I've got super lens. And in the perfect world, when we're thinking about that for opera piece, I've got the, the perfect glass lens and it is this way perfectly straight. It's not tilted in this way in any, in the OC of that beautiful glass lens is perfectly aligned with my pupil and I'm looking out at the big A and I said, yes, number one is much clearer. And the practitioner writes these numbers. It's the perfect world. Is there such a thing? Of course not. In the real world, this lens can be tilted this way, can be tilted this way. Those movements mathematically with formulas that you know change the way that the power of that lens is perceived. My minus seven, minus 125, my minus 650 at 150. If I pull that lens, it is the perfect lens. It's glass, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. It measures perfectly on an auto lens meter, specifically minus seven, minus one and a quarter. If I put that on at any point other than the distance and the exact same position that it was when it was in the phoropter, my brain sees it different. That's compensated prescription. How does it see it different? It sees it different depending on how far away from my eye the lens is, vertex distance. It sees it different depending on how the lens is tilted, retro, panto, neutral. And it sees it differently depending on how the lens is turned as far as face form or wrap. I can calculate those. If I take these numbers right here and I account for my vertex depth, this may go up or down. The closer or the further away that lens, depending on its plus or if it's minus and how much power it is, my brain will see it as being weaker or stronger. If I tilt this lens, this way, I induce cylinder in the 90th meridian. If I wrap my lens around face form, I'm going to induce power along the 180 in that meridian. So the computer jumps in, takes over, accounts for vertex depth, accounts for wrap, accounts for tilt, and builds this lens instead of being minus seven, minus 125 at 85, to the numbers that you see. It's gonna do the same thing for this. That 650 could be stronger, it could be weaker depending on the power, minus, plus, if it's moving away from the eye or moving in. All that's covered on the website. If I tilt the lens along the wrap, the zero, the zero 180 or looking above, it's gonna change the power. If I tilt the lens, my panto, retro, this way. It's gonna change the power. It's gonna change the power. It's gonna change the power. It will even alter the perceived position of the axis. Our supercomputing super computing power lets us recalculate those three so that you go from this to that wild and crazy, to the thousandth of a diopter, excuse me, hundredth of a diopter now, prescription where this is different, this is different, and this is different. We did not change the prescription. We changed the lens so that when the person puts on that pair of glasses that they chose, and it's got tilt, and it's got wrap, and it's got vertex distance, that when they put them on, when they're looking through that lens, they get this up here. The lens itself, put it in the lens meter, try to read it, you're not gonna get this. But in the wearer's brain, 
they're getting this because we've compensated the lens powers, position, degrees, axis, to be correct for the as-worn position. That is what compensated prescriptions are all about. Thank you so much for watching. If you're catching this on our YouTube channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button down there in the corner. Feel free to leave a comment. I do read them and I do take them to heart. Don't forget the videos are only a small part of the big picture at opticianworks.com, the website. Hopefully we'll see you there as well.